This program is brought to you by Computerized Auto Search. Cascade Sports, and tonight we have the head coach of Johnson C. Smith. Who do we have here? This is Steve Joyner. Steve hey. Joyner Sr., because there is a junior around. All right, all right. That's what's up, uh, Coach. Hey, Coach, uh, off camera, and I talked to you a little bit about how the interview goes and how I like to do my interviews uh, as it relates to your history. So that uh, our audience is not just about Johnson C. Smith, these interviews, it's about your history. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. And I like to say, from the moment that you fell in love with the sport, uh, run it on down to our uh, viewership. Well, I, I grew up in a unique city, Winston-Salem, uh, which, which is in East Winston, where Winston-Salem State uh, University is located. and. Uh, Clarence Pickhouse Gaines was the, was the coach during those times that I was growing up. Uh, and so basketball was very prominent in East Winston because of the university and because of, of Big House. And so we played all the time. The recreation center that I attended. I'm going to uh, cut you off for a, 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 a minute. Out here in the Midwest, they might not know who Big House Gaines was. And I do coming from the East Coast and, and run that, run a little bit about, about who he was and they'll understand when you're talking about him and you come up in that atmosphere. Well, Clarence Bickhouse Gaines was, it was the legendary coach at Winston-Salem State University, won over 800 basketball games, uh, coached the legendary player uh, Earl the Pearl Monroe, who went on to star, star in the NBA for many, many, many years. Uh, and he was the head coach in Winston-Salem, at Winston-Salem State, and probably one of the most single figures that was responsible for why many people got into basketball in, in that town. All right, go, go on about your life story. And so uh, my playground, my recreational playground, was very near Clarence Big House Gaines', uh, Gaines' house. We had to walk past his house. Uh, to get to the playground. And so many days he would come out and have conversations with us about school, about growing up, and about things that we were going to experience in life. So uh, it was a unique environment. And go on. What, what grade was you in? I want you to go to where you, where you got now. And uh, did you play when you were young? Oh, we played all the time on the playground. We... Uh, you didn't get into school basketball until about the fifth grade. And and talk about some of the coaches that influenced you. That's the main reason when I ask my coaches to talk about their life story. A lot of times, like you as a college coach, right, uh, and you mentioned Big House Gaines and Earl Monroe. There were coaches that helped Earl before Big House Gaines got him. and. Mm -hmm. They, they don't get the recognition that they should get. And so what I want you to do really is talk about who helped you develop your skill set, your mind, uh, frame of mind, uh, on the way to, to, to coaching. Uh, and did you coach before you got to Johnson C. Smith? Run it down. I did. I did. Uh... But once again, recreational play was very, very important uh, in our development. The, uh, the directors of the recreation center always got us involved in summer basketball and would, would take us around from recreation center to recreation center to play against other, other teams. And so that was important to our, our development. Uh, what was unique in, uh, during that time also in Winston-Salem? was that the grade school coaches communicated with the middle school coaches and the middle school coaches uh, communicated with the high school coach about development and play. And so therefore they always got you ready for the next level up in terms of what you were going to experience in terms of basketball. Do you feel that's taking place now uh, in, in the 
run uh, talk to, uh, talk about how you see uh, that age group at this point. That's that's lost. That's that's lost. Unfortunately, <clears throat> that's been replaced uh, by the uh, what do you call it? the coach? These personal trainers and all personal, of that. The personal trainer is is the thing that uh, is involved now. And these people uh, who helped us helped us for the love of our development and the love of the game. Now it's it's a it's a paid sequence. Yeah. Hey, hey, coach. Do you see the kids? You know, I told you I'm from New York and. Uh, they had the rucker tournaments and and mm -hmm. and all of that. And I'm saying uh, the kids on the blacktop uh, out there on the concrete with the chain nets. Uh, that's what you're talking about. How you came up, I right. believe. Right. You know, your graduation was uh, when the uh, older boys didn't have uh, ten people to play full court and they would ask one of you to come over and play. You knew that you were getting better. And, and the only way you could get better was to play against, against the bigger and older boys. Hey, hey, back when I was playing, they had the butcher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he stopped you. Uh, uh, nowadays, it's, it's, it's a little different. How do you feel about uh, AAU versus uh, the European model, uh, the traveling, and AAU is not the same as when you came up and when I came up. Uh, that European model is, in the summertime, they're working on their skill set. They're in the gym taking thousands of shots. Uh, they might be in the gym by themselves uh, doing that, or in the gym with someone passing them the ball, rebounding the ball. Uh, how do you feel about that? I think AAU can, could play an important part, but what's missing is that uh, many of the youth who are involved in AAU, they don't earn uh, their way to playing. Uh, we used to have to wash cars and sell donuts and do all kinds of things to raise money uh, to travel around with AAU, but now these guys have sponsors. Uh, they are told to go to these uh, tournaments and showcase themselves. So the art of team play is lost. Uh, and again, I think that's what's missing. You see so much individual basketball uh, now uh, that you don't see the art of team play. Hey coach, that is, I've talked to a lot of coaches and post, uh, posed that question to them. Uh, mm -hmm. I think your perspective uh, was missing in some of those answers, that team play. And mm -hmm. as you say, these showcases showcase your skill set, not, yeah. not, not the team. You can showcase your skill set within the boundaries of the team. It's a team sport. Right. And, and I think that's important to the game. Uh, I think the, all the way up from the major college coaches to uh, the NBA, they're all are complaining uh, because uh, guys are coming out and they only care about their game. Uh, but in order to win championships, as many of the great pros have understood, from Michael Jordan and the like, you have to have a good supporting cast. And the deeper that cast, the deeper the run you can make. Hey, hey Coach, uh, did you coach before you came to Johnson C. Smith? I did. I was fortunate. Uh, my high school coach got the job at Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia as I was graduating and uh, from Johnson C. Smith. And he picked me up and took me to Richmond and made me his assistant coach. Uh, he literally placed me, uh, but certainly influenced me heavily to go to graduate school at Virginia State and start working on my master's, which I do have a master's from Virginia State. Down in and Pittsburgh? Down in Pittsburgh. You know, I, I told you, I've, uh, we probably was in, the same time. I was down there in 70. Yes. I was, I was a I was, freshman. Yeah, I was there. Uh, well, actually, I was, I was there in 74. All right. You, you, you had gone. Um, I had gone to Central State. Some of the same people were still there. Uh, what was the coach's name? He was a tall. Uh, Harold Dean was still there. Harold Dean. I was trying to remember his name for this conversation, but I couldn't remember him. Very legendary gentleman uh, who would give you the Trojan handshake. He wouldn't shake your hand. 
he shake all the way up to your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, you know what? Your your mentor, Mark Sherrell, he was asking me about the shake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Mark knew about it, and uh, but Harold Dean was was a very uh, futuristic coach. Uh, he he knew how to. Uh, recruit talent. He loved that D.C., Baltimore area. I was getting ready to say, and he, he had a couple of boys out of Philly. A couple of boys out of Philly, and uh, he was always a, a, a tough team to play against. Uh, so, uh, what did you learn while you were in Richmond? How did that well, help you with your skill set to finally become a, a head coach? Well, that, that, I, I had to transition. I was transitioning from from a, a player to a coach, uh, instead of looking to be led, I had to lead. And so therefore, uh, I learned a lot about player development, uh, individual backgrounds, and, and, and trying to blend people together uh, to work together. So uh, th those were the most important things. Did, did you do uh, recruiting? I did. I did some recruiting. But at that time, uh, my head coach was Robert Moore, as I said who was my high school coach, who picked me up and took me to Virginia and, and made me an assistant coach. He did most of recruiting, and he did most of it from his desk. Oh, all right, all right. It all was right. all about contact. Uh, talk to me about uh, how you felt when you got that first head coaching job down at Johnson C. Smith. Talk to me about your emotions and what you, what you were thinking, your family, and all of that. Well, it was a tremendous opportunity uh, for me. I certainly had mixed emotions because I was replacing my head coach, uh, Robert Moore, who then brought me from Virginia Union back to Johnson C. Smith as his assistant there. And so <clears throat> it was an opportunity uh, for me to transition in, in, into coaching. And I'll never forget Jeff Mullins, who was the uh, legendary a Duke player who played in the NBA for many years. He was, the head, he was the head coach at uh, UNC Charlotte at the time and uh, called me and talked me, uh, to me about that position and encouraged me to, to take it. Uh, what, what kind of team did you inherit? We were, we were starting over. Uh, we, didn't, we were rebuilding. Uh, we didn't have an abundance of talent left over. Uh, the, the players that were there were seniors. Uh, and so we, we had to start from the ground up in terms of putting a team together. And I'll tell you, so, so we did uh, very early on uh, because we began to bring in young players like Mark Cheryl uh, the very next year. Uh, he was one of my What kind of player was Mark? Mark? Told me about some of his accolades. Run that down to me. Mark Sherrill was an outstanding offensive talent. Uh, back in the day, he and Rogers, Rodney Rogers, uh, who played at Wake Forest and then played um, uh, in the NBA for many years, they were down there in Durham tearing Durham up, going head to head against each other, getting 30 to 40 points against each other. Mark Scherer was certainly a great offensive talent. That's what he said. He said that it was hard for him to make the decision, but he was glad to make the decision to go to a D2 school. Well, he scored over 2,500 points. <clears throat> you don't get many players in your career as a coach that can score over 2,000 points. And right now, uh, uh, he's one of the top, uh, probably top five to top seven scorers in the history of, of the CIAA. So that speaks volumes. a lot. Yeah, that speaks volumes to the type of player uh, that he was. He was certainly an offensive talent. Uh, but beyond that, he was uh, uh, certainly a very passionate person about sports, about basketball, about being involved with people. He was as much of a team player as he was an individual uh, talent. All right, so uh, what kind of record did you have your first year? Run that down. <laughs> I, I think we maybe won 10 to 12 ball games our first year. Uh, we didn't win very many. Uh, my second year, we got off to a slow start. I was very concerned. And uh, I never will forget then president of Johnson C. Smith, 
was Dr. Robert L. Albright. And uh, just taking a tough loss, I was downstairs stalking and uh, somebody came by and said, hey, Dr. Uh, Albright is upstairs waiting to see you. I said, oh my God, <laughs> what is this about? So anyway, I go upstairs and very uh, professionally, very nurture, nurturingly, he said to me, uh, Steve, he said, I can see what you're doing with that team. You be as patient with them as I'm going to be with you. That gave me all the encouragement in the world to keep working. I knew I was right. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, during this conversation, I want to talk about uh, the nurturing effect of HBCUs. And uh, after your uh, second year, where 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 where'd you take the team? Well, we, we began to move up. Uh, actually, we recruited a kid out of, uh, actually, Bob Moore did. Uh, I had heard a kid by the name of Walter Hurd, who had played with the Gauchos out of New York. That's Gauchos right. was one of the top teams in AAU uh, back in that time. My teammate's dad uh, coached that. He was a police officer. Yeah, yeah. And so Hurd came in and was uh, uh, a freshman for me and led the nation in scoring. And uh, we, again, as I said, we wasn't winning very much. And so he was encouraged to leave and, and uh, actually transfer within the conference to Virginia Union University to play for Dave Roberts, mm -hmm. who was a coach at that particular time. And I remember saying to Walter, Walter, don't leave. In two to three years, we're going to be exactly where Virginia Union is today in terms of winning. And so Walter's senior year, Mark's senior year, we in Richmond, Virginia, in the Richmond Coliseum, playing Virginia Union for the CIAA championship. Walter Hurd hit the last second shot to beat. <laughs> How ironic. Very <laughs> ironic. And I remember telling the guys, I said, listen, defensively favor the Walter. I think he's the only person out there uh, that can beat us. And sure enough, he kept trying to get to him, got to him, and he hit a big shot. Hey, hey, coach. Uh, uh, getting to current day, what, what what are you looking like on the win loss? Uh, and what was your team like last year? And what are you looking forward to once this is over? Well, you know, we 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 were fortunate to win twenty ball games this year. Uh, we thought we improved ourselves to be very very comp. Um, I'm gonna say competent, but yeah, we were we were competitive. Uh, in terms of uh, in-season play. Uh, but we did not mature enough to be ready for uh, tournament play, championship play. And so uh, we won 20. We won, our, we won our division. Actually, we were chosen last in our division, and we rose all the way to number one. Uh, and, uh, but we went into the tournament and didn't do so well. And uh, we're looking forward to avenge that next year. T tell me this, Coach. How hard is it to recruit now? Uh, was so you know it's so competitive now. Uh, not not just uh, with the CIAA, great conference, uh, but with these larger schools uh, having these budgets uh, and. They have the airwaves also, which is a, sure. a, a big part of it. How hard is it for you to recruit the type of talent that it takes to win? It, it, the recruiting is one of the most difficult things that any coach has to uh, compete against. And certainly schools who have uh, better resources, uh, in some cases, bigger facilities, um, you know, and, and that's what they do. Uh, to showcase to these young men, uh, this is where your locker room, is. your locker room, uh, this is what's available to you uh, at different uh, uh, times. And so those are the things that you kind of have to uh, sort of say, you want to try to keep up with the Joneses if you can, but you can't. Uh, but as much as you can to make sure that you have what you need uh, to help develop your players and move them along. I say to players all the time, you want to go to a place that is a good fit for you because if don't, you'll find yourself in that NCAA transfer portal. 
that that's what Mark talked about, and that's what what I learned that, and I don't think it, even though it was 69, 70, I don't think it has changed. Uh, when I came out, I had scholarships to Brown and to uh, Syracuse and things. My coach mm -hmm. told me, Carlos, you won't last two seconds at one of them schools. And you know how it was back then. Mm -hmm. You had to have your black student union. You only, you know, you don't fit in. But when you go to these HBCUs, it is yeah. a nurturing that fit uh to me it fits like a glove you like at home and, yeah. and and them teachers is like mom and dad it's not like i'm the english teacher the english teacher know everybody on campus and everybody know him the yeah. coaches you know everybody everybody knows you exactly. get out of line and they're gonna get you back in line like you was home well it's it's, a, it's still a family affair and uh, it's always good to see uh, students and student athletes return to the campus uh, where they had their, 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 their uh, glory days, their fun days. Uh, and they all have stories that they talk about of people who they met and people who nurtured and encouraged them. So uh, that's still there. Uh, I had a long conversation just the other day with Twiggy Simons. And you know Twiggy, Twiggy played uh, three, <laughs> excuse me, three years with me here at Johnson C. Smith, and then uh, had a, a historic career with the Harlem Globe Trot. Uh, he had Metalock Lemons and did the things that Metalock did for the Globe Trotters. But what Twiggy talked about was his days, his nurturing day at Johnson C. Smith University, and he would not have traded them for anything else in the world. Well, that's, that's, how, that's how I felt about Virginia State and Central State. I was mm -hmm. fortunate to be able to uh, experience two HBCUs. And uh, because I ran track uh, and we were a national high school uh, rated, two of my players went on, uh, two of my teammates went on down to North Carolina Central uh, oh. with Doc Walker. And yeah. I, you know, I used to, uh, when we had a little break at Virginia State, I'd travel on down to North Carolina and yeah. get, a, get a taste of what things was going on at Johnson C. Smith. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of the different up small colleges, we get in the car and make a trip on the campus, go try to look at the women, look, see mm -hmm. what, kind of, what was going on. And mm -hmm. I don't think you get that in these, these larger institutions yeah. as an African-American. No, you know, again, one of my theories is that uh, uh, black colleges, HBCUs, need to continue to work to have the African American student return to, to black colleges. Um, with with uh, integration, uh, doors were open to our students and they uh, went out and they went out for these other opportunities. Uh, and so we had to develop ourselves back to that philosophy I said, we had to keep up with the Joneses. We had to develop ourselves academically uh, uh, to get those students back. Now, many of us have major STEM programs on our, on our campus. One of the things I think we need to uh, pick up on and bone up on is getting the black athlete back. Well, that's, that is the whole purpose, Coach, of Cascade Sports doing these type interviews and focusing on our HBCUs. Because uh, we, when the budgets that you have to do media and what have you is is is, is limited. There's not an HBC. There might be a handful that have uh, a budget to do different things, but for the most part, and our kids don't get a chance, especially out here in the uh, Midwest. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't know anything about. Uh, mm -hmm. HBCUs mm -hmm. and uh, this thought when you go to the final four per se they think they have a good time there go to a CIAA uh, championship oh yeah there's nothing like it there's nothing like it you know the CIAA tournament is probably the third largest conference tournament in the NCAA Division one, two, or three. Uh, it produces an economic impact 
uh, here in the Charlotte region of over $50 million in one week. Uh, and so uh, it's huge. It's, 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 it, it, it has a TV package associated with it. We're on a spy. Uh, we, it, uh, it's star studded. It's well attended. Uh, it's the kind of event that our young people need to know more about that they can come to and uh, uh, be a part of and expose themselves uh, to something that is, is really a, a great event. Well, this is what we plan to do when things get back on track, because yeah. uh, now I'm able, our, our company, we, we're the only black owned digital media in the Midwest. And we, this is just our sports channel, but we produce like 36 shows. And I have the Black Coaches Association, it's called the City of Fountain Coaches Association. Mm -hmm. the, I have the Black uh, Business Association, the Kansas City Business Association. And then mm -hmm. we have What's Up Kansas City, which we produce uh, 36 shows, but we have What's Up in every major city in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, the majority community owns 99 and 900% of all forms of communications. And that's hard to beat when these big colleges have the money to get their message in the airwaves and it's packaged and our kids don't really understand. When you go to some of these, the, the recruiter has you, but you go there, you're just another number. Yeah, yeah, just a, you're just another number. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, it, it's just, we got to continue to try to find ways to help each other. And, that's, uh, and to get the word out. So I'm, I'm so happy that you're doing what you're doing. Uh, so we get the word out in your area about CIAA and CIAA schools and institutions. And, and uh, maybe we'll get a few more people from that area. Hey, Coach, hey. wrapping up, is there anything that you would like to say to our audiences so uh, that they, and, and how to contact uh, you through email and, and so forth? Yeah, you know, again, go on the Johnson C. Smith University website. That will be www.jcsu.edu. And you can find out all about Johnson C. Smith University. Link over to the uh, athletic webpage. You can find me there and what we're all about in our sports office. And then also a link to the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, better known as the CIAA you'll be surprised. Hey, hey coach, now you know uh, the lady I talked about, why don't you give her a shout out? Cherry of Cherry Sports. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet uh, her through a, another mutual friend here in Charlotte. And uh, certainly so, so proud of her and her business. And uh, her, she just had a birthday, so happy birthday. All right. Hey coach, it was a pleasure having you on the show. And uh, we look forward to uh, some more interviews and uh, with your players. Sounds good. I'd love to do it again. All righty. This program is brought to you by the City of Fountains Coaches Association.